Here we'll look at expressions under square roots, like 7 squared plus, minus, times, or divided by 5 squared. Is it possible to simplify any of these? That's what we'll find out. But first, take a look at these equations here. Some of these are correct, but not all of them. Go ahead and select the correct equations, or click down here to review. Exactly, these two equations down here are correct, and that's because you can distribute exponents onto numbers that are being multiplied or divided. So you can distribute the square onto the 16 and 9 up here and again over here. Let's take a closer look at this equation. As long as you're multiplying or dividing the numbers inside the parentheses, this equation is true for any exponent, like 2, 3, and 4. But what if the exponent is 1 half? Is this equation still true? Let's find out. First, let's look at 16 to the 1 half and 9 to the 1 half. What do these expressions equal? And if you're not sure, then click here to review raising to the 1 half power. Raising to the 1 half is the same as taking a square root. So 16 to the 1 half is the square root of 16, or 4 and 9 to the 1 half is the square root of 9, or 3. Great, so the right side of this equation is the same as 4 times 3. Now let's look at the left side. 16 times 9 is 144, so this is 144 to the 1 half power. What does that equal? What's the square root of 144? Right, 144 to the 1 half is 12. So is this equation up here correct? Well, it's saying that 12 equals 4 times 3. So yes, this equation is definitely correct. And this rule about distributing exponents, it works even when the exponents are fractions, like 1 half. And if we rewrite all the 1 half powers as square roots, this equation says that the square root of 16 times 9 equals the square root of 16, times the square root of 9. So not only can you distribute exponents onto numbers being multiplied or divided, but you can also distribute roots, like this one. And again, that's because roots are really exponents as well. They're fractional exponents. So next, try applying this rule to evaluate this expression. The square root of 7 squared times 5 squared. See if you can figure this out without using a calculator. And if you get stuck, just click over here. Excellent! So first, you distributed the roots onto 7 squared and 5 squared. And then, you cancelled out the squares and square roots. That left you with 7 times 5, or 35, the correct answer. Now, distributing the root also works for division. So next, try evaluating this expression. The square root of 6 squared divided by 2 squared. Nicely done! You distributed the square root onto 6 squared and 2 squared, and then cancelled squares and square roots, leaving you with 6 divided by 2, which equals 3. So now you've distributed roots onto numbers being multiplied or divided. And we also said you can't distribute roots onto numbers being added or subtracted. Let's make sure that's right. As an example, let's look at the square root of 8 squared plus 6 squared. Now, you might think, oh, we can distribute the root. This equals the square root of 8 squared plus the square root of 6 squared. Now, the square root of 8 squared is 8, and the square root of 6 squared is 6. So this is 8 plus 6. But are these two expressions the same? Evaluate both of them and see for yourself. Precisely. 8 squared plus 6 squared is 100, so this square root is 10. Meanwhile, 8 plus 6 equals 14. So these two expressions are different. This is something to remember. You can't distribute roots onto numbers being added or subtracted, only multiplied or divided. So far, we've only been looking at square roots, but this rule applies to higher roots as well, like cube roots. So of these three equations here, which one is correct? Exactly, so cube roots can be distributed as well, but only onto numbers being multiplied or divided. So as your final challenge, try evaluating this expression. 
the square root of 2 squared times 3 squared times 5 squared. And again, try solving this without using a calculator. To get started, which of these is a correct equation? So when are you allowed to distribute roots over addition, subtraction, or multiplication? Exactly, roots can only be distributed onto numbers being multiplied or divided. Now suppose you have the square root of 45. How else can we write this? Well, 45 equals 9 times 5. So the square root of 45 is the same thing as the square root of 9 times 5. And because we're multiplying, we can distribute this root. So it equals the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. Now let's take a closer look at this first root. What is the square root of 9? Right, the square root of 9 is 3. And so that means the square root of 45 equals 3 times the square root of 5. Let's double check that. Use a calculator to evaluate both of these expressions to two decimal places and make sure they have the exact same value. Nicely done. So you can see that both of these expressions are indeed the same. Now, 3 root 5 is considered the simplified version of root 45 because we now have a smaller number under the square root. So next, try simplifying another root, the square root of 28. Excellent! The square root of 28 equals the square root of 4 times 7 and the square root of 4 is 2. So root 28 equals 2 root 7. Let's look at another example together, the square root of 800. Well, 800 equals 100 times 8. So you might say that this equals 10 times the square root of 8. So while this is an equivalent expression, perhaps we can simplify this even further. Let's take a closer look at the square root of 8. That equals the square root of 4 times 2. And the square root of 4 is 2. So root 8 equals 2 root 2. So let's replace the root 8 up here with 2 root 2. And so the square root of 800 equals 10 times 2 root 2. 10 times 2 is 20. So this equals 20 times the square root of 2. And this is the fully simplified way to write the square root of 800. When we say a square root is simplified, that means we have no square factors under the root. There's no way to simplify root 5 or root 2, so these expressions are fully simplified. Try another example, the square root of 108. Make sure that your answer is simplified with no square factors under the root and feel free to ask for a hint if you get stuck. Very well done! 108 equals 36 times 3, so root 108 equals 6 root 3. The number 3 has no square factors, so 6 root 3 is the simplified way to write the square root of 108. Next, try simplifying this sum, the square root of 8 plus the square root of 50. First, you'll want to simplify each of these roots individually and then simplify the sum. Excellent work! Root 8 equals 2 root 2 and root 50 equals 5 root 2. And 2 root 2 plus 5 root 2 equals 7 root 2. And this is the simplified way to write root 8 plus root 50. Now you can also simplify cube roots and higher roots. For example, let's look at the cube root of 54. 54 equals 27 times 2. Again, because we're multiplying, that means we can distribute the root. So this equals the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 2. And the cube root of 27 is 3. So the cube root of 54 can be simplified to 3 times the cube root of 2. And just as simplifying square roots means having no square factors under the root, simplifying cube roots means having no cube factors under the root. Try another example. Simplify the cube root of 40. Right, 40 equals 8 times 5, which means the cube root of 40 equals 2, the cube root of 8, times the cube root of 5. 
and this is the simplified way to write the cube root of 40. For your final challenge, try simplifying this expression, the square root of 6 times the square root of 15. And if you get stuck, click over here and we'll figure this out together. Write the square root of 6 times the square root of 15 equals the square root of 90, which simplifies to 3 root 10. Because 6 and 15 both have a common factor of 3, that means their product, 90, has a square factor of 3 times 3, or 9. And that's why you were able to simplify this expression. Nicely done.